Everton have been deducted a further two points for violating Premier League. PSR, God, they're appealing. Of course they are. Of course they're appealing, yeah. and supposedly these new PSR rules, we're going to get, we're going to get the uh, uh, judgment uh, before the end of the season. Um, obviously, they were docked six points before. That was under the old rules, yeah. um, which had a longer process. This is under the new rules, supposed to be provide real time answers. It sucks for them, but at some point, once you move to the real time system, there will be some overlap between the three years before and the True. three years now. Um, I think Everton have more serious issues in terms of their ownership situation. Uh, but this is a table, Jules. You can tell me who's going down. Palace uh, are in 30 points, Brentford 29, Everton 27, Forest 25, as well as Luton uh, also on 25, Burnley 19, Sheffield United on 16, and Everton and Forest have a game in hand. The ones who are the bottom three that have said, Oh, oh no, no love for Luton. The Come on, the Hatters. I just don't think they will do it. I mean, it's so close, Jules. It's really close. It's great because everywhere in this table we have competition. I'd be very concerned about clubs that have been trending the wrong way, like Brentford, for example. Um, it's easy to forget how we all assumed Luton were dead and buried, and now they're they're far from it. Yeah. In, in very, very difficult conditions, they're right up there. I don't know. Um, I agree with you on Sheffield United. That's all I'm going to say okay. right now. I'm still holding out hope for Vinny and Burnley. 777 partners, the Miami outfit, who are looking to buy Everton. Gabby have asked for an extension to close the deal. Do yeah. you, you have the money or you don't have the money? What, what is a month going to do? <laughs> All right, so this is, I'm, I'm trying to piece this together. So obviously these are the people who already own either outright or they own big chunks of uh, of Hertha Berlin, of yeah. Genoa, of, was it Standard Liège, I think? Yeah, Red Star. Uh, uh, <laughs> Red Star Paris. Uh, Vasco da Gama, I think, yeah. as well. Um, so basically, under the, the terms of their negotiation, the Premier League is evaluating whether essentially they're fit and proper to own a club. Um, Premier League said, well, wait a minute, you guys borrow 150 eight million um you better replay this by monday or otherwise we're gonna have a problem here this is this coming monday yeah. so they asked for an extension to repay this loan okay uh and then this is the people this isn't everton by the way these are the people who want to buy everton right so they borrowed the money what they did with the money is they borrowed the money and then they loaned it to everton they've loaned everton about 180 million since september um so they're saying so my first question is so that 180 that you gave in September, most of it is this <laughs> 158 million that yours. you borrowed from MSP and whatever. So they're saying, <laughs> well, look, we we all we're going to fund the running costs until the end of the season. While you guys, Premier League, make the decision, we figure it's going to cost us about 60 million between um, now and the end of the season to to fund Everton, which again seems kind of odd to me because yeah. there's three months left in the season, yeah, right? I was gonna say. Seven um, games. So that's twenty million uh, a month, give or take, right? That would suggest that Everton's wage bill is about two hundred forty million, and that there's no money coming in whatsoever week after week. That yeah. there's whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. Who it's knows these numbers? Strange. There's just so many freaking questions here. Like I, honestly, like how about you borrow the money, get your financing in place first, and then you make the bid. And then you don't go and borrow money know, left, right, and center so from people who are going to want their loans repaid. Yeah. I, it doesn't. I, I just doesn't. It's not a good look. No, it's not. Hey, you'll like this one. Yeah. Since you're old school. Like Paul Scholes, who, did I ever mention Mark Ogden uh, played with him when they were in the... Uh, yeah, he's only nice. talked about it every other week. Paul Scholes uh, took to Instagram to criticize Kabi uh, Menu and Alejandro Garnacho, posting a picture of them wearing hoods in training. He says, you can't train properly with a hood. Uh, <laughs> Jules, do you agree? <laughs> to be fair, I've never trained with a hood. Uh, they had the beanie underneath. Is that right. yeah, beanie that you say? Maybe they didn't want the beanie to be wet with the rain. I, I don't know. They put the the hood on. I don't know. We didn't see the whole training. Well, we that's what photos. I mean. Dude, wait, wait. You found a picture of training. You weren't yeah. at training. You find no. a picture. Maybe they Before were training we know, without the hood, yeah, and exactly. then they put the jackets on. Because guess what? They live in Manchester, like you. Yeah. And it was rainy and cold and horrendous. Yeah. And I'm not sure the hood, like... But I prevent you from playing at your, at your highest level because, you know, it says, like, stand, let's begin on the training pitch. Well, what, what, what kind of standard? Well, like, dress code, dress sense standards? What, so what? So do you like putting your socks <laughs> on top of your tracks to bottom? Are you allowed tracks to bottom to train? Are you not? You remember the snood? There was a bit of controversy with the snood at the time in the summer, in the winter when you play, when you cover your neck. 
I mean, come on. I hope in his next Instagram post, Let he them play. talks to us about, he tells us his views on the footballers who cut holes in their socks. Oh, yeah. And in particular, Dako no, no. And I hope he goes all granular because there's some players who, you know, I understand why they do it, but they just kind of like cut a series of holes down, down kind of the, 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 the back of their socks, right? Yeah. I watched Nani Madueke up close. Just check this out. His, it looks like Swiss cheese. He cuts them. There's no pattern to it. It seems different every time. So I'm like, are you making a fashion statement on it? Maybe. What does Paul Scholes feel about it? I feel like I really need to know. Question. Very good question. Let's hope he answers. Football director, not director of football, but football director John Murcha is leaving Manchester United. Jules with Ratcliffe and Brailsford coming in, and Omar Barada. Most definitely. Not a surprise. Not a surprise. We will miss him. Not really. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly what he did or if he did it well even. But he, did. he signed players on behalf of who the manager wanted. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, well, in that case, he didn't do a great job. Uh, John Murto. There's a reason why Fletcher, for example, is staying and not Murto. Uh, it's a fresh start. They were always going to bring a new sporting director, director of football, football director, whatever way you want to put it. Uh, and it would be Dan Ashworth. And then I don't think they would have kept John Murto within the club anywhere. Fletcher, they're going to find another job. Uh, but for Murto, I'm sure he will find another job somewhere in football. Chelsea have spent £80 million pounds, Gav, on a building and land next door to Stamford Bridge to their stadium. Does this mean that they will be redeveloping that stadium rather than moving anywhere, anywhere else? So, yeah. So, I mean, it's a complex answer here, actually, Jules. Okay. Uh, basically... It's the, it's, called the, it's the Sir Oswald Stahl Mansions. Um, that's actually what it's called. Because okay. We're here nice. in England and people have to have silly names. Yeah. I, I'm not, I don't know who Oswald Stahl was. I'm sure he was an important, kind person. Uh, and this is a place, that this is basically a building for, um, almost like an old age home for, re, for, for veterans, for, for okay, former so, soldiers. Yeah. Um, so they bought it for 80 million. It's right, right next door to the, to the, to the ground. This enables them to build a much bigger footprint for Stamford Bridge. Um, don't worry. They're not going to chuck the veterans out on the streets as part of the agreement. No. Like they have, they're going to okay. rehouse all That's of them. That's good of them. It's going to wait until, it's not going to happen until the end of 2025. Um, they couldn't realistically move anywhere either because they have this weird agreement from, or unusual agreement that I think protects Chelsea fans dating back to when the club nearly went bust before, where the freehold of Stamford Bridge is owned by this organization called Chelsea Pitch Owners. Yeah. And they have to, essentially, if you wanted to move Chelsea elsewhere, you would have to rename it something else, maybe, I don't know, Clear Lake Superstars or something. Right. You can't keep the same name unless they agree on it, if, okay. if Chelsea essentially move away from Stamford Bridge. Um, so this suggests to me that they've decided they're going to redevelop the land uh, it is a very, very tight fit. I don't yeah. know if you can build a new stadium next door to Stanford. I don't think there's enough land for you to build Could it you next do door like to Stanford Bridge. Could you do like a Liverpool Bridge. and just go higher or maybe just extend the They have one? planning permission for that, um, which Roman Abramovich negotiated, although I think that's going to expire at some point. Uh, it's a tough one. I mean, they're yeah. obsessed. with they, they want more match. They, they have a stadium that holds 42,000, and what they consider their peer clubs, Liverpool, United, Arsenal, Spurs... They all have much bigger 60, grounds. Yeah. And, and of course, United might be getting a brand spanking new one. Yeah. So they, this is necessary. <laughs> 